This is my buddy Heidi, and this is Heidi's roadmap to success. Um, Heidi is a great dog. Um, she is uh, she's goofy at times, uh, but she's a shepherd. She's very shepherd-like in a lot of regards. Um, the guardian um, uh, adopted or rescued her uh, from. She was kind of living on a campus life, and probably didn't get really socialized as much as we would like around people and dogs when she was younger. She can interact with dogs and she's got some dogs that are buddies, but she also has a little bit of that protective shepherdness and that nature to her. And I think one of the things uh, that I've discovered in the session is that she doesn't really have a lot of rules. And, uh, and as a result of that, and I think she's a little confused as to how she contributes to this group. And I think she's identified that she's gonna be the guard dog. There's also a couple things that we, uh, like the guardian was using a prong collar and some other things that I think might be contributing to a little cortisol in her blood, which is gonna amplify things and probably is a little bit of the reason why she sounds sensitive to sounds outside, a little bit more likely to bark at dogs and people and things along those lines. So removing those aversive tools will help her feel a little bit more relaxed. At the same time, we also want the guardian to uh, get back to using her marker word. He, she uses a marker sound of and then that means that the dog did what you wanted and it's to be followed by a treat. So I'd like the guardian to start doing that. Uh, we call it celebrating. So every time the dog comes to her, sits down, lays down next to her, puts her chin here, gives her eye contact, drinks water, eats her food, goes to the dog bed, uh, poops, uh, I, uh, checks in on walks. The more that we use that, I, that marker signal, the more we're telling the dog, that's what I wanted and I'm gonna pay you and give you a treat. Uh, the benefit and the power of positive dog training is we create the motivation for the dog to do the same end goal that I want as a human. Now, I want the dog to walk next to me and not attack other dogs. The dog just says, well, if I walk next to David, I'm going to get a whole bunch of treats. We're doing it for different reasons, but the end result is she's walking next to me and she's getting treats. So we're both happy. So um, what I, uh, one of the things I, I went over with the guardian was uh, celebrating desired behaviors as much as possible, as well as uh, something called petting with a purpose. Um, I asked her if she, uh, if the dog, if Heidi nudges her for attention, she said no. And I, before I even had a chance to ask my next question, which is usually, would it be fair to say you pet her so much she doesn't have to ask? The guardian's like, no, I pet her a lot. So um, I'd like to, you know, petting our dog is a great positive thing, but if we pet our dog after it does something that is not desirable for us and we're not aware of it because we weren't paying attention, we're taking some notes and she's chewing this and then nudges me and I pet her. So she's like, oh, I get petted, if I get petted after I chew something. So this is where a lot of serendipity happens. We're just, we miss things. We're not paying attention because we're so busy with our lives. Or the dog is nudging us, we're petting them. Well, the dog's like, oh, so I get to tell the humans what to do and they'll do it. And that means I'm responsible for these humans, but these humans sometimes do things and put themselves in danger and that stresses me out as a dog. That is gonna also amplify my stress and, and the cortisol levels. And that's gonna make me more likely to be reactive. So incorporating some rules such as uh, the video above, we talked about the relaxation protocol. Well, that's a great foundation. We have, we'll follow that up by going and kind of using a version of that to teach her to stay out of the kitchen. We can do the same thing like I talked about for the door. Uh, so we get to the landing, sit, and then I reach a little bit for the door, pull my hand back, click, click, give her a treat. And so eventually I might reach several times before I can actually touch the doorknob. Then I'm jiggling the doorknob. Then I'm punching the code into the security alarm. And then I'm opening the door an inch. And then I'm opening it six inches and I'm opening it all the way. And eventually I'm going back and forth like this. And the dog's like, you're a weirdo. Why do you keep, why don't you just go open through that door? But we're doing it in stages and helping the dog practice the behavior for, that we want for each individual stage and not moving to the next stage until the dog is proficient at it and comfortable and being motivated and rewarded. So the dog wants to do what I want it to do. Um, eventually you can open it and then you take a step forward. And if you take a step forward, she comes with you. That's too much, just like the video above. Then maybe we open the door and just kick our foot through it and then pull it back and give her the treat. So always back up to uh, one of our trainers in, in our Omaha location says, going back to school. We always go back to a previous level of success and practice there a couple times and then try to move to the next level. Um, let me see, uh, command cues is something we talked about earlier. We don't wanna say the cue unless the guardian is 90% certain the dog is gonna do it. If that's if I'm not certain, then I just wanna lure the dog or manipulate the dog in a non-confrontational way until the dog does the thing I want and I say the marker word. And after we do that enough times, the dog has muscle memory, it's actually the myelin sheath, but then the dog doesn't have it. So we get to the landing and I just stop and sit down, I get a treat and then we walk to the next set of landing on the steps. Um, I dog ski with one of my dogs. I put on rollerblades and I put him on a harness and he pulls me from Santa Monica to Venice back to Santa Monica to Chautauqua and back. But when we're on side streets, I make him stop at every stoplight, even if I have a green light. Because if I don't help him stop practicing there, when it is a red light, he's not practiced, he's just gonna blow into it and I'm gonna get clipped by a car. So you have to help your dog practice anything you want them to do. And like I talked about earlier, is you really wanna do it in small steps, in a, in a situation where it's the classroom environment and help the dog practice it and develop confidence and know what they're doing and help us develop our timing 
and then gradually work our way back to real world situations. We also talked about um, uh, uh, exercise. Um, there's sniff walk. Sniffing burns more energy on walks by, than, than walking. Uh, the guardian does a good job of letting her sniff. Uh, we did a little orientation game when we were there. Um, and so every once a block, I'd like the guardian to just grab a handful of treats. I'd like her also to get about a six foot lead uh, for the dog. And let the dog have plenty of room so it can sniff here. The more leash your dog has, the more we let them sniff, the more that they're likely to pull the lunch on the leash because we're listening to them and they don't have to pull the lunch. We're letting them get to where we want them to go. So once a block, I'd like the guardian to stop uh, show, and come up with a word, you know, for this called orientation or attention or whatever you want to call it, and say, and say, you know, Heidi, she gets her attention, she looks at you, and you say attention, and throw the treat. She goes and gets it, and as, and she gets it, and as we wait for her to look at the at the guardian, as soon as she does, click click, and then they throw a treat over here. So the dog doesn't have to come back to the person. I just go over here, get a treat, and I look at check in again. I get another reward. So each block, we help the dog stop what it's doing, focus, settle down, and focus on me, and be rewarded for me. And then we'll go to the next block. And next time, I never know when it's going to come, but each block, my guardian is awesome. She lets me go ahead and get all these great treats. And you're going to notice that she's going to check in with you other times as well. To supplement this, we also went on what I call the long walk, where basically we can take about anywhere up to five steps or so. Stop and let the dog have as much room and go wherever it wants as long as it's safe to do with us on the leash. And I have a treat. I'm just waiting for the dog to look in. Eventually, the dog's like, why are we walking? Looks up at you, click, click, and hold out a treat. The dog practices coming back to you gets the treat and then you walk down the street a little bit further and so if you do this every five steps maybe for 10 treats that's going to take you like about a minute to start the walk but now the dog is starting the walk with some self-restraint self-control checking in with you listening to you then when you're walking every time she looks at you click click and hold a treat but don't give it to her have her come back to you um, we do this with puppies a lot what we do is as soon as they get on the end of the leash we make a positive interrupter sound the most common positive interrupter sounds we'll see if she can pop her head up for this one is there we go. And so as soon as the dog hears that, I hold out the treat, it turns around and comes back to me. So if we time it up, every time the dog gets the end of the leash, we make that positive interrupter sound, they turn around and look at us and we're holding a treat, they come back to us. After enough time, we, if you have a classically conditioned response, the dog gets the end of the leash, turns around and comes back to you because you've done that a hundred times. And now you're not having to make the positive interrupter sound, she's just coming back to you and getting a reward. Um, I think we're going to set up a follow-up session and come back and work on a little bit of having her uh, walk with us a little bit so we can uh, the guardian doesn't have to rely on that prong collar. Um, and, uh, but the more that you get your dog to check in with you and reward with you uh, and be rewarded for doing so, the more they're likely to continue doing that. And then we don't have to worry about, there's no collar or leash that's going to stop a dog from pulling a leash. That's called training. And so the more that we provide our positive response, the more they're going to do that. Uh, let me see, what else did we go over? We went over hand targeting. I have a video on that one, but I'd like you to practice that and have your friends and people that come over practice that as well. And that's a great way, remember we talked about engagement um, and, and consent. A lot of us, we think we can pet any dog. That's how we make friends with the dog. If the dog turns his head to the side, lowers his head, backs away, or won't come or won't look at me, it's saying, I don't feel comfortable with you touching me. And that's okay. We feel the social pressure. We're talking about this uh, a couple minutes ago. If well, what if my dog growls another dog? Should I grab the dog's snout or should I kind of correct the dog? We feel as a as a societal member the a pressure that we should be punishing our dog for that because that's not a desired behavior. A dog baring its teeth or growling can be aggressive, but often it's just the dog's way of saying I disagree, and there's nothing that's going to come past that unless we don't listen to what they're saying. Now, if it's inappropriate then I would actually say, okay, well, we need to recreate the situation and help the dog practice a replacement behavior the way that we want, but not in the real world situation because that's not really, uh, it's not the best time to do it when the bullets are li uh, flying and it's live because we all feel pressure. So uh, the guardian, uh, if she can increase her exercise before friends come over or before certain things happen, that can also set dogs up for success. One of the things we talked about Yes, there we go, sweetheart, is uh, uh, playing, uh, sniffing our walks, which we talked about earlier. We can also do scent games. Um, that's mental stimulation. Same thing with feeding out of a snuffle mat, uh, treat dispensing toys and puzzles, Kongs filled with peanut butter, lick mats. These are things that can keep the dog preoccupied. Scent games, we went over cookie in the corner. I have a video up for that one. That's the one where you throw the treat. And then she, when she came back to us, we, uh, or she said here, and then she come back, and, or is it here or come for her? Uh, here. Here, so here she comes back, click, click. Then we throw two treats and say hunt each time we do it. And then three treats and four treats. And eventually, now you've Googled scent games, you can say hunt, 
And the dog goes and searches looking for a bunch of treats. And after we got done playing the game, she spent another two or three minutes searching the area. And that was the first time we've ever done it. You start doing this a lot. I have people that like hide bait lures in like a cabinet here or under a cushion or somewhere. And the dog's like going and sitting next to your cupboards. Those are great ways for your dog to learn how to uh, use its nose, which is physically draining. Are we still recording? Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, so uh, there's also uh, something else you might want to look into is getting a doggy backpack. It's a harness that has pockets right here that you can put bottles of water or bags of sand. Make sure you check with your vet. Some dogs have mobility issue. We, we don't want to make it worse. Um, and we can also throw or play fetch uh, in the house. Remember, as you're playing fetch, say fetch as you throw it. And then when the dog brings it back to you, if she doesn't drop it right away, hold the treat out. When she drops it, make your click click sound, pick it up, then add a pre -mac. Tell her to sit. If she doesn't sit, then we don't throw it. But as soon as she sits, I say fetch and throw it again. So we're building in a little bit of self-control. She comes back, she has to drop the ball, then she has to sit, and then I'll play the game. It's my game. I want to play your game, but we're going to play with my set of rules, and we're going to help the dog practice a little self-restraint in a way that the dog doesn't even see it. But that's what we're doing. We're wearing a dog park. We need a dog to practice self-control. So every once in a while, ask your dog, when your dog comes over to you at the dog park, make sure you say click, click, and pet. Most of the time, the only time we call our dog at the dog park is when we're leaving. So they don't want to come to us when we call them. So when they come to us on their own, that's that celebrating, click, click, and pet. Um, and if you can, now dog treats at dog parks can be problematic. Uh, you have to kind of read the room. Um, sometimes you can use a cookie treat like a, cook, like a Charlie Bear or something like this, uh, but not a meat treat. But every once in a while, go to the side of a dog park, ask her for some sits and downs. That's practicing while all the crazy excitement is nearby. You may have to be outside of the dog park to do it. But gradually, like we talked about earlier, work your way back to more realistic steps. Um, but helping the dog practice, that's one of the things I have a lot of clients do. When they're on a walk, I ask the dog, have them ask the dog to sit maybe once a block, or you know, depending on what the variety is. But I was one woman, every 20 steps, she had her dog sit. And when she got about two blocks away from her house, her dog couldn't sit. I'm like, that's the maximum distance you can go from your house for now, because when you get beyond that, your dog can't sit. There's no way your dog's gonna listen to you or you're gonna ask him for attention or not to bark at someone or something like that. And so asking the dog, rewarding those check-ins, asking the dog to sit and say the mark word, giving those treats, helps the dog dial into the person. But if the dog won't, can't do the most basic thing like a sit, you shouldn't continue going further. Uh, in poss when possible, try to not let her play too roughly with the other dogs at the dog park or at the home. The more intense is when things are gonna happen. Also, we talked about constricted areas. Those can cause problems unless the dogs have a level of a relationship or intimacy with each other. So try to avoid excited, behavior in confined areas. That's just not a good combination. When she is reacting to something, the absolute best thing to do is increase the distance between her and whatever it is. And she won't necessarily know that's the case. That's one of the reasons why we went over Tantori. She's like growling at the other dog and you say, touch, oh, come and show my nose in your hand. I'll come over here. What do we do? We got her to go away from the other dog with, and we created a, a, a solution to the problem without making it worse. Remember, good attention and bad attention for dogs is the same thing. So if she starts growling, we say her name, that's almost the same thing as getting our cookie. But if she growls and I say and throw my hand down, she comes over and touches her hand, click, click, and then she gets a treat. I redirected her attention without validating it. Then when she came over to me, she, I gave her something else to do and she got a reward for doing that and you get another reward for doing that. Um, so the idea is kind of like with kids, it's kind of like distracting them as opposed to, we don't want to punish or, or correct them or make it a big deal. We just want to kind of, uh, hey, the game's over here. Let's do this instead of that. Um, let me see. Um, i trying to think if there's anything else uh, that we went over that you want me to cover. Anything else you want me to discuss? I think that's about it. Sit. Well, this is my buddy, uh, Heidi, and this is Heidi's Roadmap to Success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it.